Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this video card. This is the EVGA GeForce GTX 670 for the win. Okay, so this is the EVGA GTX 670 FTW for the win edition, which means this is uh, the highest available uh, manufacturer clock speeds available on a GTX 670 from EVGA. When EVGA gets uh, GPUs, they bin them, they test them for speeds, and they take the best performing GPUs, they put them in the for the win editions of the video cards that they make. Uh, some other specs for this card, you get two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, it's got a 256-bit memory bus, effective memory clock speed of a blistering 6208 megahertz, uh, of course you get support for stuff like DirectX 11, physics, uh, 3D vision surround from NVIDIA, you can also support up to four displays off of this single video card. It's uh, PCI Express Gen 3 compliant, so uh, we'll work at PCI Express Gen 3 speeds, which is a more efficient interconnect. It'll also work in a Gen 2 uh, or 2.1 system, so don't worry if you, if you don't have uh, a, one of the newest motherboards out there. It'll still work. It's really a bandwidth increase and an efficiency increase with PCI Express Gen 3, so um, you'll still get really good performance even with the older gen. Anyway, uh, we have also have four-way SLI compatibility. When the 670 first came out, it was only listed as being compatible with three-way SLI, uh, but via a driver update, uh, NVIDIA has gone ahead and enabled four-way SLI for those of you who want the maximum amount of video cards in your system. You can go with that, and you get additive performance by combining video cards together. Some other key features listed on the back here, the Text is kind of small, but uh, you get GPU boost, which means that uh, the video card will automatically overclock the GPU core clock speed uh, based on the thermal environment. So if it's not too hot, it'll give you some extra performance. You get adaptive V-Sync, which is a pretty cool feature. Uh, if you're familiar with V-Sync, it uh, does its best to match the refresh rate of your display, so which is usually 60 hertz, for example, 60 times per second. It'll try to match the game's frame rate with that. However, if you dip below, say, 60 frames per second, your game will actually try to run at a multiple of 60. For I'm using 60 as an example here. Um, so it will, say, drop from 60 to 30. Adaptive V-Sync turns on V-Sync when your frame rates are above 60, uh, so you don't get that tearing effect. And if it drops below 60 or whatever the refresh rate you have set, it will turn off V-Sync, and that way you'll still get good frame rates and you won't have that big dip that's associated. Uh, NVIDIA surround, so you can again support four monitors out of this video card. You can use three of them for 3D gaming. Uh, four concurrent displays, two dual link DVI connections, HDMI and DisplayPort 1.2, uh, DirectX 11, of course, physics, 3D vision, SLI ready CUDA technology. You actually get 1,344 CUDA cores in this video card GPU, PCI Express Gen 3, OpenGL 4.2, OpenCL support. And then there's all the package contents, which uh, I'll show you right now. All right, so here is the contents of the retail box. You get the fantastic EVGA poster, which has been a mainstay for quite a while. There you go. EVGAgaming.com. Arm yourself with EVGA. Got some ammunition there. And an EVGA logo with various weapons protruding from it. Put that up on your wall. You also get a, ooh, a package of information here. Let's see what's included. You get enthusiast built uh, decals for your case, so you can put some big EVGA stickers on your case or wherever else you like to put stickers. You get a driver disc right here. It also has an EVGA case badge in there, so you can put that on your case if you like case badges. Uh, the drivers are usually outdated on the, on the disc that comes with the video cards, so I recommend going to the EVGA or the NVIDIA website to download the latest drivers because driver updates generally get you performance boosts and better compatibility. Uh, some information here about plugging in the supplemental PCI Express power connectors to the device and also to make sure the uh, video card has cooled off before you touch it because they get hot, you can burn yourself. Uh, quick start guide here, so a very simple little one page guide for installation as well as the connectors on the back. And then the full user's guide right here which has more information and tech specs and ooh, color. There we go. And then we have some power adapters here. So uh, you have two six pin uh, PCI Express power connectors on the card. So that's what both of these are. If you happen to have an older power supply, uh, you should have at minimum a 500 watt power supply for this video card and your whole system. 
Um, that's recommended by EVGA. Uh, but if you have another one that doesn't have the PCI Express connectors, these have two Molex to PCI Express. You can use those to power the card. Again, make sure you do have at least 500 watts of power supply, and you should have a high quality power supply too. This is a uh, DVI to D sub VGA analog connector. If you have an older monitor, you can use that to connect it. And here's the video card, and since this is so shiny and new, look, it still has a plastic on it. You should peel this plastic off. This is a custom designed video card from EVGA. Uh, they made a few decisions here, consciously, of course. Um, one was to go with uh, their own custom design, since this is the For the Win edition. And uh, if you've looked at the other uh, GTX 670s out there, the uh, reference model has a shorter PCB. It only extends to about here. And then the uh, extra length of the card is simply part of the plastic shroud for the blower fan. So they did stick with the blower style fan for this design. As you can see, blower style fan down there. This is all enclosed around the outside. So not much exhaust except for a tiny little slit right there. So most of your airflow, oh look, there's another piece of plastic to peel off. Wait, there we go. Uh, so most of your airflow in this video card is gonna be moving that way, which is as it should. There's uh, your heat sink and uh, your radiator fins, which are gonna be underneath this portion of the shroud. And then uh, at this end, you have a bit of exhaust and that is where most of the heat is gonna go, uh, which is really ideal in a lot of build situations because the heat actually exiting the back of the case is better than the heat being exhausted out the side of the card, um, which could theoretically increase the temperature of the other components that you have installed. That being said, blower style fan down here, uh, enclosed shroud, Here's the GeForce GTX logo that's on this side as well, the e as well as the EVGA logo. In most cases with the card installed, that's what you'll be looking at is this side of the card. Here's your SLI connectors up at this end. They do include a little rubber protective cover on that so you don't accidentally touch them because it's not good to touch gold contacts if you can possibly avoid it. Uh, here on the bottom, we can see the mounting uh, of the shroud right here. There's also some other Phillips head screws around that are uh, holding that shroud in place. So you can remove those uh, with the removal of a bunch of screws. Uh, the GPU sits right beneath this uh, group of transistors right there. Um, some more information about the Kepler architecture. It's 28 nanometer. Uh, it does have that GPU, GPU boost feature. So uh, stock clocked GTX 670s run at 950 megahertz base clock. Uh, this one runs at 1006 megahertz base clock. This also has boost clock, that feature I mentioned before that will automatically overclock the GPU if the thermal environment permits. Uh, boost clock on this goes up to 1084 megahertz and that is as compared to 980 uh, from the stock version of the GTX 670. I should also mention that each GPU is slightly unique. Each GPU is going to perform slightly different than others. So uh, the 1084 megahertz listed here is actually the sort of more conservative estimate. All the 670s I have tested have actually, generally speaking, gone past that and typically whatever boost clock it gets up to, it will maintain. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty cool feature. The power requirements are down here on this end. You have two six-pin power connectors. Uh, I will note that it uses the sort of stacked uh, uh, power connector, the same uh, one that the 680 actually uses. So that's a feature to bear in mind there. Also down here at this end, of course, we have our video outputs. So that's where you connect stuff, your monitors. Uh, please note that there's DVI-D, that's digital only at the top, right there because it doesn't have the extra little connectors there and the little plus shape. The D, whoops, sorry, I'll get that later. <laughs> you also have DVI-I here. Uh, both of these are dual link DVI, it's just the bottom one here has the analog connection. So if you are gonna use that DVI to VGA connector, plug it into this bottom one here, it won't work with the top one. So you get two DVI outs, dual link DVI. Uh, those are capable of 2560 by 1600 resolution. And then you also get a HDMI which is protected right there, and uh, you also get a display port, so HDMI display port. And again, you can actually do separate monitor video outputs from all these, so you can support up to four monitors with the single video card. And I can't forget to give you guys a measurement. So measuring from the bracket right there, uh, we are just about at 10 inches, so 10 inches long for this video card. Should fit in most uh, decent sized mid-tower computer cases. I would give it maybe a little bit longer than 10 inches to make sure that you have enough room, also enough airflow for that little bit of ventilation that happens there at the back. And also bear in mind, uh, again, your power connectors are on this side, 
so uh, you won't have to have extra length on this end for the plugs to go in. A couple final features of this video card that you get is FXAA, which is Fast Approximate Anti-Aliasing, which is a pretty cool feature. Look it up if you want to find some more information on it, but uh, it's very low as far as resources go and it actually provides a pretty big boost as far as anti-aliasing goes. You also get TXAA, which is Temporal X Anti-Aliasing, I believe it stands for something in that range, which uses uh, frame rates from the past and from the future, or frames from the past and the future to help with the anti-aliasing as well as post-processing. So. Pretty cool features there if you want to make your games look prettier. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the EVGA GeForce GTX 670 FTW for the win edition. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.